Yeah, my name's uh, Mark Wise. I'm 27 years old. Uh, I'm from an Army family, so uh, actually my great-grandfather was at Pearl Harbor uh, in the Navy. Uh, my grandfather was in the Army during Korea. He was in Europe, though, and then my dad was in the Army uh, during Gulf War One. Kind of my dream was to be an Army Ranger, and unfortunately, I made a, not unfortunately, but I made a decision to go into the Air Force Academy. I graduated from the Air Force Academy and had an opportunity to kind of change the path that I was on, so commissioned into the Army out of the Air Force Academy. So out of a thousand graduates, five, five a year on average elect to go into the Army. So I had a chance to do that, so I switched to the Army. Uh, and got to live my dream and go into Airborne School, Ranger School, Infantry School, and came out and was an infantry in uh, 4th Infantry Division out of Fort Carson, Colorado. So 24 October 2009, I was in Kandahar, Afghanistan, in Zari. Uh, and a morning patrol with a platoon of roughly 30 guys, and we were supposed to secure the highway in the area. We kind of rotated through this mission. My job as a platoon leader is communicate and move, right? Move the unit, let them do the fighting, and just be in control. Uh, I put my hand on, I put my left arm on my knee, my hand on the wall, and I looked over at my unit, and Devin said, hey, let's, let's switch spots. And he had a grenade launcher, he had a better angle from where I was at, and I said, okay. I put my hand over, I slid over on one knee, he stepped around behind me, and as he stepped around behind me, he was killed. Uh, so I was blown back, um, completely blind at the time, still conscious. Uh, I thought an RPG or something had hit next to us and blown me back. Well, Devin had stepped on a mine, uh, a little, call him a tuna can, uh, a little AP mine uh, with about 40 pounds of uh, homemade explosive or HME underneath. So he was instantly killed. Uh, I didn't know that at the time. Uh, it blew me back. Uh, it blew the entire front vest off, so you wear a, you know, you wear your body armor, and there's a front plate and a back plate, and it's kind of draped over your shoulders. Well, it blew the entire front plate off of my body. Uh, the front plate broke all the bones in my face, um, and I was blinded because of all the dust and blood and whatever else. Uh, my left eye is uh, essentially blind, but I just have peripheral vision. I can't see your face or focus or anything, but I could walk around. The both eardrums were ruptured. Uh, they removed a lot of shrapnel from behind my eye. Uh, obviously my face has this big hole, um, so there's a patch from my chest to fill that. It was, it was just a big gaping hole, so they patched that. Uh, a couple plastic surgeries to make sure that my mouth was still kind of able to move and rounded. Uh, a hunk of my shoulder was gone, all the nerves in my, well, well, right through here, but also my right arm, my right shoulder, the nerves were cut, so I couldn't move my right arm for a few months. Uh, the skin on the back of my hand was blown off again, it was up on the wall. So if you see, the mine was back on my left, the blast kind of cut up my left side. So a big hunk of my forearm is gone. Um, this is all just down to the bone. Uh, the fingers were amputated, uh, so I could still feel the hamburger or whatever was left on my hand. And they, they just removed that and cut it off. Um, uh, seeing the mission of uh, walking with the wounded and seeing that there's an opportunity to contribute to set the example and to, uh, to contribute back to those less fortunate uh, behind us that are still struggling or still working through the process of recovery. Um, and so I met Ed and Ed definitely uh, communicates that opportunity very clearly uh, and lets you know that there are other people that we need to help uh, raise awareness about and uh, promote you know, the mission of walking with the wounded.